Ken Whiting with Paddle TV and in this video we're talking about life jackets and more specifically how to choose the right life jacket. It's spring right now. This is the time of year where we're starting to think paddling. We're getting excited about paddling and we're thinking about some new gear to buy. You know, let's start right from the top with life jackets. Uh, what's the rule for life jackets and paddling? If you don't already know, life jackets are essential to wear. By law, you have to wear a life jacket, whether you're uh, kayaking, canoeing, stand up paddling, any small personal watercraft, you have to wear a life jacket. Think of them like uh, a seat belt in a car. You have to wear it. And it's very similar to a seat belt in the reason why you wear it is 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not going to need it. It won't matter really if you wore it or not. It's for that one in a thousand times or maybe even more that you do need it. And when you need it, you need it. Uh, because in paddle sports, it, really any water sports, when things go wrong, things can go very wrong very quick. So you need to wear, not just wear a life jacket, but you need to wear a properly fitted life jacket. Uh, so when that thing does go wrong and accidents do happen in the most benign situations, you're ready. So let's talk about the different types of life jackets that are available for paddling, or just available in general, and why it's important to get a life jacket that's good for paddling. Uh, and the biggest reason is, a life jacket that's good for paddling is going to be comfortable to wear. If you have to wear this thing while you're on the water, if it's not comfortable, you're going to be inclined to take it off. And it's just like, hey, imagine your seat belt in a vehicle wasn't comfortable to wear. Imagine it had like straps between your legs and it gave you this non-stop wedgie or something like that. You know, you'd be inclined to not wear it when you're just even doing a short jaunt to the grocery store or something like that. You know, you'd be like, hey, I'm not gonna wear that thing, that's annoying. If your life jacket is the same thing as that, you're not gonna wear it, and that's a problem. But on top of that, a, pa a life jacket that's good for paddling, paddling involves a lot of motion, you know, a lot of activity. If it's not a good life jacket or PFD, personal flotation device, for, uh, for paddling, then it's going to be uncomfortable. It's just going to impede your mo your movement. Uh, it's going to cause chafing or wear in, in, on areas. And so it's important to have a life jacket that's good for paddling. So there are a few different types of life jackets and they'll say on it type one, type two, type three. Now type one and two life jackets, what they're designed to do is they're designed to float an unconscious person with their head above the water. And the way they do that is they tend to have um, big collars behind the head to float the head up and then a lot of flotation in the front to bring the belly up. Now type three life jackets, they're not really, they don't do that. They're not life jackets in that sense. If you're unconscious, they may float you face down. They're really swimming aids. And for paddling, that's the preferred type of life jacket, a type three life jacket, not because they wouldn't float you up upright if you're unconscious, but because uh, the flexibility to m put the flotation in different places around the body makes for a much more comfortable paddling experience. But you do need to know the limitation there. That is, if you do swim and you were unconscious for some reason, it ain't gonna do the same job. All right, now let's talk about the different types of life jackets and how to choose the right one. And really there's two main types of life jackets. There's inflatable life jackets, and then you've got standard life jackets that are foam on the inside. Now, let's look at the inflatable life jackets to start. Inflatable life jackets, they have a CO2 uh, cartridge in here that will automatically inflate. And you can think of these things like the airbag in a vehicle. Some of these inflatables will have, will auto inflate. So when they're immersed in the water, you know, they'll inflate like an airbag in a vehicle, it auto inflates. Um, but they also have uh, manual tubes. This one has uh, a tube here so that if it doesn't work for some reason or you need to top it up, you can, you can uh, blow it up as well. Now, pros and cons of inflatable life jackets. First of all, the pros. The pros of these things is they're really low profile. They're light, they're small, they're, 
You know, they're, they're comfortable. They're definitely comfortable to wear. Um, they're also, because they don't cover a lot of your body, they're much cooler in hot environments to wear. Now, the cons, well, think of, you know, wearing an inflatable life jacket is like driving without your seatbelt on and just relying 100% on the airbags in your vehicle. Yeah, there's a lot of protection that comes from the airbag, but you're losing a lot of protection because you have to inflate this thing before it's useful. So you're losing a layer of protection here. You have to be aware enough if it doesn't have an auto inflate to, uh, to inflate this thing for one. And if it does have an auto inflate, it can inflate at the wrong time. And the way these things inflate, they're not designed to be user friendly. They're designed to float you with, when they inflate. They're not designed to be uh, easy to swim in, easy to, definitely not easy to paddle in. You're gonna have this big airbag in front of you. So um, they are great for safety. They are a good choice in some, in many situations. We're gonna talk about that in more detail a bit later, but there are real limitations to, um, to inflatable life jackets. All right, now let's talk about standard life jackets or PFDs. Standard life jackets use foam instead of air to uh, provide the flotation. Now, the pros for standard life jackets is safety. They are ready to go at any time. You know, you're wearing a seatbelt and you've got the airbags for a secondary layer of protection. They also, maintenance wise, they really, as long as you, you treat them reasonably well, don't leave them wet in your bag, that kind of thing, or sitting in the sun so the material just, you know, eventually starts to fall apart. There's very little maintenance required. And that's actually something I didn't mention about the inflatables. Is the inflatable CO2 cartridges need to, they say you need to be replaced every year. And so you gotta remember to do that. And you have to spend the money to replace those cartridges. Uh, otherwise, these have more features. I mean, different life jackets will have different pocket setups, hand warmers, you know, uh, attachment points for radios, uh, knives, tow belts, all sorts of different things. A lot more options with standard. Uh, life jackets. And the other benefit is that they're warm. They, uh, this foam that's wrapped around you helps insulate you. Yes, it can be a con in really hot environments, but you just have to choose the right standard PFD. Some of them have a lot more venting than others, but if you need warmth, you can actually get ones that, are, that actually give you a lot of warmth. So now let's talk about the cons of a standard PFD. And there really is one main con, and that is comfort. And that only is really a con if you're getting a non-paddling specific PFD, a very you know inexpensive PFD that's designed, general use PFD, designed for anything. It can be uncomfortable for paddling or for swimming. It doesn't always need to be, but it can be. But paddling specific PFDs, if you choose the right one, it can be very comfortable. It can be just as comfortable as an inflatable PFD and you get a bunch of other benefits with it as well, which is why standard PFDs are definitely the preferred PFDs for paddlers. Now, drilling down into that a bit more, who should go for an inflatable and who should go for a standard PFD? Well, inflatable PFDs are, are good for people who are A, paddling in hot environments and it makes a difference not having a lot of bulk around you. It, it's a, a good choice for people who are going to be paddling in very calm water and protected water where the chance of capsizing is very, very low. And so that also relates to the type of boat you're using. You want a boat that's not going to capsize very easily as well. And that's why inflatable PFDs are sometimes used by kayak anglers. Kayak anglers who are in hot conditions and paddling in very calm and protected waters because they're very low profile. They're using fishing kayaks, which are designed to be, designed so you can stand up in them and fish from them. So super stable. The chances of capsizing are very low and that's a great time to be using an inflatable. Otherwise, if you have any chance of dealing with rougher conditions, uh, you want more safety, you want all the features that can come from uh, a life jacket, take advantage of st storage. Um, even just for snacks, for sunscreen, for you know, fishing tackle, then 
a standard PFD is the ticket. So let's dive into how to choose the right standard PFD, because there's not that many options with inflatable, inflatable PFDs. Let's talk about how to choose the right standard PFD. But before we do, let me take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, who is a supporter of my overall mission to help people get outdoors and make sure that those experiences are as great as possible, and that's Outdoor Play. Outdoor Play is an online store. Uh, I mean, they've been in the paddle sports market for a long time, a couple of decades. In fact, Outdoor Play was the uh, a major sponsor of my second instructional video ever, ever back in 2001. And, uh, and since then, they've really been one of the leading retailers, online retailers in paddle sports. Cool company, and they uh, offer free shipping in, in the US for order, orders over 49 bucks, I think, but they ship also ship worldwide. They do price match guarantees so that you know you're getting, gonna get the, uh, the best price. They got a really, they're paddle sports specialists. They sell other stuff, but they're really paddle sports specialists. Um, and so they've got the right gear in stock as well. And even better for you guys is that they have given you a code to use paddle tv 15 if you use that code you'll get 15 percent off your next order and so i will leave a link in the description box down below that you can use and hopefully you guys can take advantage get a little savings it doesn't work on every product but it works on the majority of the products all right so choosing the right life jacket now first of all it, uh, the more expensive a life jacket is it doesn't necessarily mean the better it is uh, what's most important about a life jacket is, well, there's two things. Number one, it's comfortable, because we've already talked about if it's comfortable, you'll be inclined to wear it all day long. If it's not, you'll want to take it off, and that's a problem. Number two, though, is fit. It's got to fit well. What does that mean? Well, a, a life jacket should fit like a good pair of trail runners or running shoes. It should be snug but comfortable and you know when you think about a pair of shoes if the shoes are too big for you if you're wearing or you're wearing big boots then you're not going to get the performance out of them you're, they're going to fall off when you are you get put your foot in mud or something they're going to come right off they're just they're not you're they're not going to be comfortable to wear they're not going to fit well the same with a life jacket so how do you get fit from a life jacket because everybody's bodies are different shapes and sizes. Well, you get that with all the strap systems that are on a life jacket. Now, paddling specific life jackets will have uh, a variety of straps. They'll have shoulder straps to tighten down the shoulders and accommodate different lengths of bodies. And they'll have side straps, straps along the sides. And the more uh, straps it has along the sides, usually two or three sets, that allows it to accommodate to different you know, body shapes, whatever your sh shape might be. Now, a type of strap that paddling uh, life jackets don't have, which you'll see on more all-purpose life jackets, are crotch straps. Those straps that go through your legs and they look miserable and they pretty much are miserable. <laughs> uh, I hate them, but the reason, the reason for crotch straps is that they stop the life jacket, when they're done up, they stop the life jacket from going over your head. And for a, a life jacket that doesn't have a lot of straps, doesn't have good tensioning systems around the body, you need that strap. For a paddling specific, specific life jacket that has the, the, the straps to you know, cinch to your body, to hug your body nicely, and, and if you're using them, you don't need the crotch strap. So, a variety of different uh, types of life jackets to consider. How they zip up is the first thing to talk about because they have front zips like this one here, the Chinook. Um, they have side zips, you know, they zip down the side, open up that way, and then there's some life jackets that don't have any zips, they just pull over your head. What you choose, there's really no, there's no right and wrong here, it's a matter of personal preference. Um, sometimes where the zipper is, it affects where the pockets are, the other features of a life jacket, and so that's a consideration, but that's about it. A bigger consideration is the back, the style of the back of the life jacket. Now this one right here, you can see it's got a mesh back, and all, except for the flotation up top here. Now this mesh back style life jacket is designed to accommodate 
recreational kayaks that have high back seats. Because if you have a nice comfortable seat in your kayak and you put this, if you have a full back on this thing, like let's say this life jacket, oh, that one, not that one, this life jacket here, the Odyssey, then you've got this piece of foam between you and that comfortable seat. Sometimes it's really nice just to have your back open. It's cooler that way and it can be much more comfortable. So mesh back life jackets are great for high back recreational seats and some touring kayaks have, have back supports that are quite high too and that's where that comes in. Now the other type is a, uh, well that's a mesh back as well. Let's on this rescue PFD. This is more of a standard PFD where it's got quite a bit of flotation on the back, throughout the back, and it's got flotation nice and low in the front. Now that is a, a typical PFD and that's great for uh, kayaks where you have a lower back support, not a high back seat. Now the third type of life jacket has got a, a thin back like this. This is the Odyssey. And all of these life jackets, by the way, I chose these to show because these are the ones I wear, I'm, I'm fam very familiar with, um, for different types of kayaks. It depends on the type of kayak. And so you know, I have the benefit of having, I mean, I've got a lot of different kayaks and I've got a lot of different paddling gear. I got a lot of different life jackets, but not everybody has the luxury of having as many kayaks and um, you know, I've I have been fortunate enough to test a lot of gear. And, I, and, and so I, my garage is full of paddling gear. But if you don't have that luxury, that's where a thin back life jacket really comes in. It's not a, that bulky in the back. It spreads the foam out throughout the whole back. So in a high back seat, it's still pretty, car, pretty darn comfortable. But also with, uh, if you have a kayak that has low back support, it's also very comfortable. It's kind of a jack of all trades life jacket. Yeah, it really depends on the type of boat you're doing. This is a great life jacket for someone who paddles a variety of kayaks or just likes that type of kayak. Um, now, someone who's paddling purely recreational kayaks in warm environments, probably want to, will want to consider a mesh back style life jacket. Very, there's no right or wrong. It's really a matter of preference. Another type of life jacket that no, I already talked about briefly is a rescue vest. And this is the uh, NRS Zen. And again, this uh, mine is very similar to this, except it's a red. <laughs> but this uh, rescue vest, the idea of it is that it has this integrated quick release um, waistband on here. And the, the benefit of this thing is that it's really for guides, uh, people who want to be able to tow, at, attach a tow line to be able to tow other, other boats, uh, whether they're with people in them. You know, an example would be if you're sea kayaking and someone, and this happens, people in, uh, in the open ocean can get seasick in a sea kayak and they are incapable of paddling. Well, you want to tow them. The only option is to tow them. That's a, that's a good option. Or maybe they're just exhausted and they need to tow. They need to help to get towed. Whitewater paddling, I'll use this as, as well. And whitewater paddles use this, paddlers use this as well to tow. It's not the same situation. Typically it's towing uh, a kayak through whitewater that someone has someone swam, the kayak's full of water and it's going downstream, you, you clip on and paddle that thing to shore, but you want to be able to release that kayak it's in a moment's notice if all of a sudden it's dragging you somewhere you do not want to go. And so you need to have a quick release harness to go with it. So that's a, a, a more of a premium life jacket, uh, but this has been my go-to life jacket actually for um, for, for, for performance paddling for years. All right, so now let's talk a few more things to talk about with life jackets. I promise uh, I'll, I'll go quick because I've talked a lot about life jackets. Who knew you could talk this much about life jackets? I didn't know I could. So, um, But kids, kids and use life jackets. There are three levels of kids life jackets. There's uh, jackets for kids that are 30 pounds and less. 50 pounds to 30 pounds, 
and then 90 pounds to 50 pounds. This jacket here, the Vista, is for 50 to 90 pounds. So after this, once a kid is more than 90 pounds, they're into adult life jackets. Obviously, they're gonna get a, a very small adult's life jacket, but the, the thing about kids' life jackets, though, when you're shopping for kids for a lot of things in life when it comes to clothes, you're very much inclined to buy something a little bigger for your child so that you get more time out of it. They can grow into it and, and you don't have to buy something new as quickly. You don't want to mess around like that with life jackets, except the fact that you're going to have to get a life jacket of each of those sizes, assuming you start your kids young. And the reason is simple, because if the life jacket is too big, it won't fit well, it won't fit, fit like a good snug pair of shoes, and so when they do go swimming, the life jacket can ride up and not do its job. And so don't mess around buying something that's too big for your kid because you get a bit more time out of it. Now, another type of life jacket is women's specific life jacket. And I don't have a sample of that right here, but, uh, Women's specific life jackets are more than just different colors than men's life jackets. It, I mean, maybe not always, but for some of the, for the top paddling brands, this is very much true. They, have, they are cut differently for women. And it's a great thing because it, allow, it provides better fit for women, which means not just more comfortable, but more importantly, it's going to stay in place. They can be cinched down, and it'll stay in place when you're swimming uh, or while you're paddling. Whew, okay, that's a lot of information about life jackets. Thanks for bearing or sticking with me. I hope you found some useful information in there. Um, I guess as a final note, I would say, there's a reason when you buy a vehicle that you don't get options of, uh, on the type of seat belts that you have. You don't, there's not the base model seat belt and a, you know, a luxury version of a seat belt. You get a seat belt, a seat belt that does its job and you get a good one. And so if there's, if there's one piece of gear for paddling that you should invest a bit more money in, into, it's the life jacket. You know, it can make the biggest difference in your life and the life of everyone that you know and love. And so it doesn't mean you have to go spend a huge amount of money but if you can put a bit more budget towards a life jacket to get a better, more comfortable and better fitting life jacket, do it. All these life jackets I've walked through, like I said earlier, these are life jackets that I regularly use. So I'll make sure I'll leave a link in the description box down below uh, for you to check those out. And you know, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, you know, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, tell me, Anything I've missed, tell me anything you don't agree with or tell me, give people advice, your own advice about life jackets. What life jackets you really, uh, you really like to use. You know, just leave that information down below. Uh, be sure to subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already and stay tuned because I've been offline for a while but I'm back and there's a lot more paddling tips, gear reviews and adventures coming your way.